War is one of the most destructive and devastating things to happen to humanity. It causes immeasurable amounts of pain and suffering and often destroys the lives of innocent people who were caught in the crossfire. War is also one of the most preventable things in the world, and yet it still occurs far too often. Hopefully, one day humanity will learn to resolve its differences without resorting to such violence. These are the top three types of warfare other than kinetic warfare. 3. Chemical Warfare Chemical warfare is the use of chemical agents to kill, injure, or incapacitate enemy combatants. Chemical agents are extremely poisonous and can cause death or serious injury if inhaled, ingested, or absorbed through the skin. They are also difficult to detect and protect against. The history of chemical warfare dates back to ancient times, when armies would poison the wells of their enemies or use noxious gases in battle. However, the first large-scale use of chemical warfare occurred during World War I. Both the Allied and Central Powers used a variety of chemical agents, including chlorine, phosgene, and mustard gas. While chemical warfare is often considered to be a cruel and inhumane way of fighting, it can be effective in certain situations. For example, chemical agents can be used to clear enemy troops from bunkers or other fortified positions. They can also be used to create a smoke screen to cover the movement of friendly troops. However, chemical warfare is also very dangerous for friendly forces and civilians. Inhaling even a small amount of some chemical agents can be fatal. As a result, the use of chemical warfare is heavily regulated by international law. Despite the dangers, chemical warfare remains a serious threat. In recent years, there have been several reports of the use of chemical agents in conflicts around the world, including in Syria and Iraq. As the world becomes more interconnected, the risk of chemical warfare spreading to other countries also increases. In conclusion, chemical warfare is a dangerous and potentially deadly way of fighting. While it can be effective in some situations, the risks far outweigh the benefits. The use of chemical warfare should be heavily regulated to prevent its spread and to protect innocent civilians. 2. Biological Warfare Biological warfare is the use of living organisms to wage war against other people. It is a very old form of warfare, dating back to times when people did not have the technology to make guns and bombs. Biological warfare can be very effective because it can kill many people without the need for expensive weapons. Biological warfare is usually considered to be a very dirty form of war because it can cause so much death and suffering. Many countries have laws against using biological warfare, but that has not stopped some countries from using it. In the past, biological warfare has been used to great effect. For example, during World War II, the Japanese dropped bombs filled with the bacteria that causes cholera on Chinese cities. This caused a cholera epidemic that killed many people. Biological warfare can be very dangerous because there is always the risk that the organisms used in warfare will escape and cause epidemics. For this reason, many countries are very careful about how they handle and store these organisms. Despite the risks, some countries continue to research and develop biological weapons. They believe that these weapons could be very useful in war. For example, if a country was attacked with a nuclear weapon, they could respond with a biological weapon that would kill many of the attacking soldiers. Biological warfare is a very controversial topic. Some people believe that it is a very dirty form of war and should be banned. Others believe that it is a legitimate form of warfare that can be used in certain situations. 1. Cyber Warfare SA causes of cyber warfare are hacking, virus, malware, denial of service, social engineering, etc. Cyber warfare is a type of digital conflict that involves the use of technology to attack an opponent's computers or networks. Cyber warfare can be used to disable an adversary's critical infrastructure, steal sensitive data, or simply disrupt their operations. While traditional warfare often involves the use of physical force to achieve objectives, cyber warfare relies heavily on computer-based attacks and exploits. These can include everything from planting malicious code on an opponent's systems to launching denial-of-service attacks that overwhelm their servers with traffic. Cyber warfare has become increasingly common in recent years as the use of computer networks has grown. Countries and organizations have been increasingly targeted by cyber attacks, and the motivations for these attacks can vary. In some cases, cyber warfare is used as a tool for espionage, while in others it may be part of a larger effort to disable an opponent's critical infrastructure. The use of cyber warfare can have a number of serious consequences. One of the most significant is the potential for a cyber attack to cause physical damage to equipment or infrastructure. 
This was demonstrated in 2010 when a computer worm known as Stuxnet was used to sabotage Iranian nuclear centrifuges. Another significant concern is the theft of sensitive data or information. This can be done for a variety of reasons, such as to gain a competitive advantage or to embarrass an opponent. In addition, cyber attacks can be used to spread misinformation or disinformation. This was seen during the 2016 US presidential election, when fake news stories were circulated on social media in an attempt to influence the outcome of the election. Cyber warfare is a serious threat that is only likely to grow in the future. As our dependence on computer networks increases, so too does the risk of being targeted by a cyber attack. It is important to be aware of the dangers. We hope you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content like this.